Well, hello, welcome to our 10 o'clock session on a Monday morning. I'm Louise um, and my full name's Dr Louise Mansell and that's because I'm a clinical psychologist and that means that I understand the brain, the feelings in the brain, what it does to our body and then how it makes us act. Okay, so today I want you to bring balloons and then later do some Lego. Okay, so lots of activities that clinical psychologists do to help our brains and bodies understand our emotions and feelings is really fun. So we're going to do some of that today. Okay, so first of all, most important thing is that you've got your brains. Okay, we have to bring them with us. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our brain check. We do this every Monday now, don't we? And we can do it in a whole different way of ways. So we're going to firstly tell our brains to do something, okay? Are you ready? Shout really loud. Yes, Louise, if you're ready for your brain check. Super. And then say really quietly, yes, Louise, if you're ready for your brain check. And then as loud as you can, just because parents love it when children scream, after three, one, two, three. Excellent. Everyone sounds really, really ready for this brain check today. So we're going to tell our brains, firstly, we're going to tell our brains to jump three times. Are you ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Did your brains do it? Oh, they did great stuff. Now we're going to do our next brain check, which is to clap as hard as we can. One, two, three. Did your brains do it? Good job. Now we're going to try something different. We're going to tell our brains to put our hands in the air and in front of us like this and wave as fast as we can, as fast as we can, wave as fast as we can, brain. And tell our brains to slow down, slow down the waving, slow down the waving. And wave as fast as we can again, wave as fast as we can, fast as we can. Excellent. Give yourselves a big thumbs up. It sounds like everyone's brain is here. Now, last week, we talked about the evolution of the brain didn't we? And how it's grown over time. And we used my little lizard friend and hedgehog and monkey. And they're back this week because they enjoyed it so much. Okay. And we thought about all the different parts and we thought about the feeling parts that are lower down and we used our hands. And we thought about the clever parts that we share with primates that are the bumpy parts. Now, another way to think about our brain as well as our hand and as well as using our lovely characters here, is to think about our brain as a bit like a house with an upstairs and a downstairs. So the clever bits are the upstairs bits and the important bits, remember he doesn't like if we say he's not clever, are downstairs. Now, I have been building a Lego house with Samuel and he's back this week as well to tell us all about it. And this is my Lego brain house. And this is what I want you guys to try and build. And anyone who builds it gets one of our special Beyond Psychology Lego certificates and one of our balloons in the post. So how about that? Give us a photo of your Lego brain and we'll explain a little bit more about it. Because this is our downstairs and this is our upstairs. Now, Samuel, are you ready to come on and explain a little bit about our brain? Can you stand there for me, darling? Okay, so tell us a little bit about our brain that we built. So, if this lizard sees anything like a bang or a hurricane or a gale or a wasp, mm -hmm. he'll ring this. Sets the alarm off. And then all <gasps> of these will be saying danger, danger, and we, all of them will come down and say, it's just Gail, it's just a hurricane, yeah. it's just this, it's just that. Excellent, Sam, thank you. Now Samuel's going to have a little sit down and he's going to come back in a minute for a game. But that was a perfect description of the little, the part of our brain that helps us with danger, sounding an alarm to tell everyone that, they, that it's, it's seen danger, but sometimes it sees danger when it's not that dangerous. So really important that these, the clever parts of our brain can help us problem solve. And just like Samuel said, they can run down the stairs. 
Okay, now the, the ability of these ones, these, these guys to be able to run down the stairs and tell these guys what's happening is really, really important. And it's what grown-ups and specialist psychologists call emotional regulation. It's a big word, isn't it? You don't need to know that word. We just need to know that these stairs are very important in how these parts of our brains talk to each other. And that's why I always talk about these guys telling our brains what's happening when it's happening. And that's why so much of my work is with schools and teachers and parents, because they're there when these guys are panicking and they can help you. They can help you run down the stairs and say, it's all right, it's just a wind or it's just a gale, a bit like last night um, that Samuel's brain had to tell him. OK, so it's really important those bits do that. And last week we did um, emotional naming and guessing what Samuel was feeling because that helps these guys. If these guys have got the words, they can tell these guys what's going on. And Samuel's um, been practicing his emotion charades and he's got another one for us today, haven't you? Are you coming back on to show us you a, a complicated one, okay? Because he thought you were so good at it. He's got a complicated one. <gasps> Is anyone thinking what this one might be? What's this complicated feeling? Hmm. I think everyone might be feeling this complicated feeling now. And it might be. Do it again, Samuel. Really? Mm. Got a bit of a frown. He's itching his head. Tell us what, what feeling is it, Samuel? Confused. Confused. It's a confused feeling. And we've got some people watching and they're having a guess as well, which is great. It's a confused feeling. So what we're going to have a think about now is other feelings that our bodies experience. And then we can name those as well. And we're going to do this using balloons. So I'm going to be a little bit cheeky and I'm going to make your bodies and brains feel a little bit nervous. Okay, so where's our balloon gone? Oh, there it is. So we're going to get our balloon and we're going to keep it in the air. You get your balloon if you can. And we're going to keep it in the air for 10 times and we're going to work as a team to do it. Firstly, with our hands. Now, if you haven't got a balloon, or um, just pop the bubbles that you've got. And if you haven't got bubbles, then catch a ball between you. But you're working as a team and we're going to try and keep it in the air 10 times, okay? And then we're going to make it even harder. Are you ready to watch me and Samuel do this? Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Did you guys manage that at home? Would you keep a balloon in the air too? I hope so. And you can do it later as well. Always do this. It's very good. But we're going to make it harder now. We're going to use our thumbs. Only your thumbs. Now, if you're popping bubbles, you want to pop the bubbles just with your thumbs, okay? You got your thumbs ready? Give your thumbs a wiggle, warm them up. Wiggle, wiggle. And the other side, just in case you need the other one. Okay, both thumbs ready. You ready for 10? Keeping it up. One. Two. Three. Four, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. We did it. You can tell we're well practiced, can't you? We're going to make it even harder now because you've got to keep it, keep making it harder to keep it interesting. Okay. Are you ready? And the grown ups decide which body part. Are you ready? I'm going to decide elbows. This is a really tricky one, okay? Mm. We're going to just do five. Should we do to five? Ten. Do we want ten? We'll do ten. Okay, ready? One, two, Three, four, he's got up there. Five, six, oh, <laughs> it's a disaster. Seven, eight, <laughs> nine, <laughs> ten. Just about without wrecking the place. I hope you didn't wreck your shelves too. So, <laughs> how's everyone's bodies feeling? Did anyone, did anyone have a little laugh? <laughs> Samuel did when all those things fell. Now fancy laughing when things fall off a shelf. <gasps> That's not naughty though, it's our body. It's the lizard part and the lower down parts of our brain. It's like a nervous laugh. And that's what helps us regulate emotions, you see. Um, and it helps us calm us down. So our bodies make us laugh. Did anyone have a little like noise like, oh, I know I did. 
I was going, oh, when I was nearly dropping things. Oh, show them, show them the mess. No, Sam, don't touch the camera, sweetheart. It's hard to get this camera lined up straight. Makes me a bit nervous. Um, so I need a cup of tea, as lots of mums and dads do too. So this feeling, can you feel it when you got the balloon? And sometimes when you nearly drop it, you might go, oh, like this. And that is all because your body's trying to balance it out and the clever bits are trying to calm you down. So it's a really good thing to keep check of, okay? Making it harder. And what we're gonna have a think about is how all that balance is really important in our brains. And we're gonna use our chemicals next week um, to think about all those different things. Now I'm gonna stay on Facebook Live in a few minutes to tell the grown-ups more about these activities because they're very technical and scientific um, and based on lots of theories including a really good book that lots of grown-ups might want to read but in the meantime while I tell the grown-ups all about it you guys get to work building your lego or playing with your balloons okay and I will see you next week at 10 o'clock for a science experiment with all my chemicals before okay I, see you then before everything breaks <laughs> bye <laughs>